On this episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show, we talk about some of the ways that we evaluate strength in both our healthy athletes and some of our injuries and surgeries. The Ask Mike Reynolds Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Before we get to the podcast, I wanted to make sure you knew about my free online course on the introduction to performance therapy and training. If you want to learn how to get started optimizing and enhancing performance, this is the course for you. Head to MikeReynolds.com slash performance to sign up today. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. I am here up in Boston, Massachusetts with my crew at Champion Physical Therapy in performance up here again in Boston. We're here answering your questions for another amazing podcast episode. Thank you so much for joining us. If you want to submit a question, because this is what we do, we answer your questions. If you want to submit a question for us to answer on a future episode, head to MikeRonald.com and click on that podcast link and keep asking away. So let's see, quickly here, we had a bunch of new students that I know Lenny wants to uh, introduce. <laughs> Uh, but real first, um, we have mostly physical therapists and Dwesh, our strength coach on board here. But we got Mike Scaduto, Dave Tilly, Dan Pope, Lenny McCrina, Lisa Russell, and Dwesh Podell all here for you answering your questions. Len, uh, is this a completely new crew of students today? This is a completely new crew of students. And, uh, yeah, they will be with us for a while. So get used to this interesting looking crowd. So we have three new students. Um, I'll go in order of which they arrived in our facility. We have Ben Fisher um, from the University of Kentucky, the home of Terry Malone. Uh, we have Zach Leal, 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 from um, NYU, New York University. And we have Chris Afonso from Clarkson University. Notice a common theme amongst the three students and their <laughs> lack of hair. Just throwing that out there as a, as we'll just touch upon that. Can, should, should, we run a, uh, should we run a study to correlation between the amount of student debt and hair follicles? Exactly. We maybe it's, see... it, it's stressful to be a PT student. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wonder if that's a thing right now. But, you know, some of us <laughs> overcompensate with fancy mustaches, right? Mustaches. So, that's, <laughs> so uh, I think we're good. But uh, anyway, all right, take it away. What do we got for a question today? Our first question is from Terry from Wisconsin. Hi, champion team. I was wondering how you evaluate the strength of your athletes at champion. I know that there are some options like dynamometer testing, isometric tests, repetition max testing, velocity-based testing, and force plate data. What do you use and why? Awesome. All right. Great question, Terry. I like that. And I think this is actually, this is a pretty big topic nowadays. I just think as, um, you know, technology is starting to, um, you know, become a little bit more prevalent. And I think all of our professions or every profession, right. Then I think people are trying to always find new ways to quantify strength, right. Back in the day, I mean, it was a gigantic isokinetic testing machine, which was amazing, right. And it had a lot of really cool aspects to it, but, um, you know, there's gotta be other and better ways, but I like how Terry kind of it like included a wide variety of things here. And I think, you know, uh, he or she, I'm not hundred percent sure. Um, I think they were very, uh, kind of, uh, holistic with this on all the different ways that you can do this. And I like how there's, you know, there's isometrics, there's rep max, there's velocity base. I think this is, this was a really good question. So, um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Duesh, why don't you start with kind of where we're at, um, maybe we can talk about a little bit about some other things that we're working towards or something, but you know, what, what are we doing with our, with our athletes here? So, so mind you, this is from Duesh's perspective, this is going to be from our, our healthy athletes and our performance kind of, kind of realm. Maybe we talk about rehab towards the end, but Duesh, what do you think? Yeah. So for our, for our performance end of things, uh, when we get an athlete into the building initially, um, we tend to look at a little bit more of like their, their power output numbers um, in different planes. We look at their speed acceleration stuff. We do do some speed or strength testing if we feel like the athlete qualifies for it, right? So one of our easy ways to do it is actually using VVT. So we use a gym aware device. And the, the reason that we use that is we try to gauge an idea of where they fall on the force velocity profile, right? We're trying, trying to get an insight into is an athlete really fast, but maybe a little bit weaker. Or are they really, really strong, 
but maybe a little bit slower, right? So we kind of use like a velocity profile testing initially when we get them in through the door. Um, as they start training with us a little bit more, um, you know, throughout the course of the, the month, we do update their strength testing numbers. So we'll have them work up to like a five rep max on a lot of our major movements, um, like squat, deadlift, uh, lunge, press, row, things of that nature. Um, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on, you know, how they're progressing on all their strength stuff for the big movements that we, we put a ton of value in. Uh, but we also do find a lot of use in velocity based testing to get an insight into their force velocity curve. Um, now stuff that we're working on towards the future. Um, I think we are starting to think a little bit about force plate, um, maybe potentially utilizing some of the, the fancier tech that's out there to get even better insight into someone so we can have even a more customized approach to our training and, you know, really influence some of the specific nature of our, um, our qualities that we're trying to build in our athletes. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Yeah. And I think like the reason why we started this kind of evolution a little bit is, you know, traditionally like rep max is, you know, there's a lot of negatives to rep max, right? There's, you know, if you, if your training age is low, then, you know, you're going to question the validity of how much you got out of that rep max session. Um, it takes time, right? You certainly, you don't want to do that on day one with a lot of people. That's really, it's really challenging and time consuming type thing. So, you know, with, with, with force plates now, I think force plates started more, you know, and this is a general comment, but like for force plates started more with like, you know, jump testing and, you know, power output and stuff. But I think now we're, we're using them quite a bit more for isometric testing and, and to do different, you know, uh, you know, testing positions, which I think is, is really neat. Um, but man, it's so much easier to just walk up to a force plate and, and do one rep and, and see what you get with that isometric, like mid thigh pole or something, for example, like versus actually going through a five rep max sequence, right? That's pretty, that's pretty daunting for, for lots of reasons. Um, so, you know, I, I, I really like what, what we're doing. I like how, you know, Dwesh and Jonah, one of our other strength coaches is really taking the lead on trying to kind of use some of this newer technology behind this. Um, one thing I think I would add just in terms of, of, um, you know, kind of talking a little bit about, you know, the, the why behind, you know, our strength testing too, is that, uh, you know, rep max testing is awkward, but for us, we think of just like, just tracking their normal training as also testing. Right. So there's ways you can do equations. And, and what we try to do is like towards the end of different phases with our athletes, we'll, we'll just record how many sets, reps and weights did they and did they use? And then we can make that uh, a standardized rep max equation just to kind of follow people. So that way there's no testing. We're not testing their strength. We're almost just monitoring their performance of their strength exercises through their program. Right. Did I say that well, Duesh? Did I hack any of that up? No, no, I think I think you said that well. Yeah. I mean, we we like push an athlete, let's say like week five of their training program, we might push them a little bit harder, but it's not like, Hey, go, you know, max effort and try to lift as much weight as humanly possible with bad form. Right. We're saying, you know, pick a weight that's really challenging so that we know that you, you have this X amount less than in the tank. Uh, but yeah, we're not certainly working anyone up to one rep max or even a three rep max. Um, you know, we try to make sure that kids are training hard and getting stronger and we have that strength and force bucket, you know, starting to be filled because we know that's an important part of their development. Um, but we also take just as much pride in, you know, the, the velocity testing and the, the force velocity profile that we're trying to build out in these athletes. And then, you know, hopefully when we do get a force plate, um, we can get even more insight into helping our athletes get, you know, better results because we know more about them, right. And what they need. Yeah. It, it, to me, it's about impactful testing, right? Mm -hmm. We don't test just to test. It's, it's impactful testing. So I like that. So, uh, very, uh, you know, just to be comprehensive with your question, Terry, but like, you know, very, that's kind of like our overall general strength now in the rehab sitting, like, I don't know, Lenny, maybe you can, maybe you can jump in. You're, you know, the most experienced with this sort of stuff, but like, I want to explain a little bit, what, what do we do differently between our athletes that are healthy, that we're just looking to develop a strength profile and what do we do to try to, you know, specifically identify strength deficits in, in somebody that's come Coming back from an injury or surgery yeah I mean, we use it a bunch i know even mike scaduto i feel like every day he's strength testing numerous numerous people yelling at them to push harder um but we do a lot for our overhead athletes we're looking for um you know we're looking for obvious strength deficits especially in their posterior cuff so we'll put them um try to come up with the ratios of er to ir and a ratio there we ideally like about 65 percent 67 percent of a strength ratio of the external rotators to internal rotators. So we'll just, we'll consistently monitor that in our athletes, especially when they start a throwing, to begin a throwing program, 
after say a Tommy John and then after a time, after they start a throwing program, maybe every month or so we're monitoring their strength to see how they are progressing or regressing. I, I use it a lot as well in uh, my ACLs. So I use it, um, a handheld dynamometer, um, just like we I just talked about for the upper, upper body. I use it a lot for a lower body too, to measure quad strength, especially I'll do some hamstring testing, um, as well. Um, it's not as, um, I don't know, I guess specific for me, but I'm really focused on the quads. You know, that's the primary focus of ACL rehab. So I'll, I'll do a isometric quad strength test at 70, about 70 degrees of knee flexion. Um, and I'll have them kick into a belt that is being reinforced onto the table. So I'm not holding the handheld dynamometer. I don't think that's a good way of doing it. Uh, I prefer the other way. I think uh, Terry Grindstaff has published a paper in IJSPT about that if you're interested. And just to clarify, Len, for your upper extremity and stuff, you're you're talking about using a handheld dynamometer to quantify handheld dynamometer. that strength. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's going to ask. Microfet, Lafayette. There's a bunch <laughs> of new ones out there, too, that are good. Um, you know, we still have the uh, Lafayette unit that we bought a few years ago. Uh, but there are other great ones out there um, that um, I don't know. we're, we're, we're kind of looking at. We're trying some new ones, and I don't know. I don't know if yeah. they're. I don't know if they're winning the race yet. I don't know the, the yeah. newer, cheaper models. I don't. I don't think we've felt comfortable with their results just yet. But we're gonna keep playing with those. But yeah, definitely Lafayette or yeah. Microfed are the two leaders. But um, yeah. Dave, what do you got? I just wanted to throw in that I've been doing a lot with the hip too. So the same dynamometry stuff. Right. Yeah. A lot of research right. in yeah. Mike's course, and I use that in a couple of people post uh, labor repairs and post PAOs, and had some really good results. But same kind of idea of belt fixation standardize it i would say uh, it's easier definitely to use your hand for er and ir when they're sitting on the table to use the belt on the er ir is very tough so you can just stabilize against your own knee and it doesn't budge much so that makes sense yeah i nice. think just so people know it's a for us the way i use it at least uh it's not a uh, break test it's a make test so i'm not trying to have them break my amount of force that i'm producing it's not like a, ma a manual muscle test mm -hmm. i am kind of creating a wall <laughs> and uh, having them push into this wall, which the handheld dynamometer is on the end of it, if I'm measuring like external rotation. So it's, again, it's it's a uh, how much force can they produce, not how much force can I break them. You know. Yeah, well, you know, which is funny because uh, we've gotten to some interesting debates with other friend researchers of us that swear that if you're using a, a make test, it's not valid. And I think I still swear if you're using a break test, it's not valid. So. I don't know what that means. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, I, I don't know. I mean, to me, I just want to see how much force they can produce, not how much force I can push into them. And, you know, right. we've had situations in the past where we've, we've, we've had uh, other physical therapists we work with doing handheld dynamometer that get really consistent at pushing the same amount of force and the numbers just the same every time. And you're like, right. yeah, exactly. how can how can that happen? <laughs> that's, a, right. that's, a, that's really ironic that every number in every direction is exactly the same. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's a learning curve, you know, and just, you know, to answer, answer Terry's question, you know, how we evaluate strength, right? There's a learning curve to handheld dynamometry, right? And I just, I'd kind of like, you know, keep that going. I got to make an inner circle video on that. That actually just kind of reminds me of like the nuances of that. Cause I'm, that is one of the harder things that we teach, you know, anybody. And I, 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 I tell everybody your data for a year is going to be useless. Right. And hopefully, hopefully less than that, but you know um, I don't know. It's just, it's so easy to, to do that poorly if you don't have the right technique, but um, I don't know. I, I think the only other person I think I'd ask, I mean, maybe I'm just kind of curious, like Dan, are we missing anything? Like, like what, what do you, do you do any specific strength testing for an athlete that's specific to their like sport or event? I feel like you'd be a good person to answer that. Anything we miss? It's funny. Cause I was just about to note on that, you know, um, I do like the handheld dynamometers a lot. I've been messing around with a lot of Achilles patients recently. And I think one of the problems you'll see is that they'll have pretty similar strength numbers, but then you ask them to do like a, a standing calf raise and we'll do like 35 on one side and they won't be able to get full range of motion on the other, you know? So I do think that it's helpful to try to get more specific and functional after a while, like check off that, you know, check the box off of handheld dynamometer has pretty good symmetry. But at least for me, I, I work with a lot of barbell athletes. So I'll do something like, Let's um, press overhead with a dumbbell on one side, see how many reps you can get, and then try the same thing on the other side and see if some of these strength numbers from the dynamometers are carrying over to the more functional activities. Because uh, in my mind, yeah, we want to get those specific muscles stronger, but does that carry into the big function that the patient's trying to get back to? So I do like trying to get back to some of the rep max stuff eventually and trying to iron out any of these asymmetries in the specific planes of motion, uh, excuse me, motion. So overhead pressing, overhead pulling, or, you know, horizontal pushing, pressing, that type of thing. 
and just making sure that we're getting strong uh, from all angles uh, for the activities that the athlete wants to get back to. I like it. I like it. And there's, there's always going to be a blend between like tech and science and feel that sort of thing. Right. I hate to say that, but like, as you get more experience, you'll definitely get a better vibe. I think Dan does a really good job of taking like the objective data that he gets and then combining it with what he sees during the performance of an exercise. I think that's, that's a pretty neat combo, right? But that takes some experience, you know, to develop that clinical judgment. So um, awesome. Great, great stuff, Terry. I think that was an excellent question, Terry. Hopefully we kind of nailed it from a few different aspects. I think there's a lot of, you know, you know, good ways to, to go about what we do there. So um, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, thanks again for the question. If you have something like that, again, head to micronaldo.com, click on that podcast link and be sure to head to iTunes, Spotify, rate, review, subscribe, and we'll keep doing these episodes for you. So thank you so much.